Thank you so much for making time every Friday evening, 7.30 to 8.30, to watch the English version of our programs. God bless you. And we thank our donors, our cherished donors, who has made it possible buying this airtime, one hour for us to air this program. We say God bless you. And we are pleading with all our cherished viewers who has not started contributing towards this program to do so, to sustain this program on air. As the program indicates, we are almost home. So all that you can do for the Lord, this is the time for you to do it. So please contribute to support this program. And the line that you can contribute towards is um, our MTN Momo line. That's 55 That's 55 you can also donate to support it. And um, we will say thank you to Mr. Freeye and the management of Home Base TV for making it possible for us to come your way every Friday evening, 7.30 to 8.30. Mr. Freeye, God bless you. And those of you watching us on Hennes TV, we say welcome and good evening. My name is Kofi Kakari, and as usual, I'm not here alone, but um, the rest of our time. As usual, evangelist Joseph Anani is with us. Evangelist, good evening and welcome once again. Good evening. Those, those of you who are watching the program for the first time, we've started something and we are continuing. That's um, the world's unpardonable sin. Today is part four. And the whole issue is 2015, the United Nations accepted some SDG 17, that's Sustainable Development Goals, that was 17 in New York. And according to evangelists, two of them, that's Agenda 5 and Agenda 13, is something that is against God. And it is a sin that is unpardonable that the world has or is committing. And um, that tells us that the coming of Jesus Christ is very close than we think of. So that is what he is explaining to us. And he's proving by showing videos, audios, and then documents. So we will give credit to the media houses, both within and without, that we get the videos from. In fact, we give the credit to them. So today, as I said, the world's unpardonable sin, part four, and evangelists are here to do justice to that. Evangelist, the world's unpardonable sin, part four. Yes. We are very grateful to the Lord this evening. That's right. Um, within the week, I was in the Volta region. Okay. A town, Akachi, specifically. And you know, I was maxed. But somehow, the people, you know, 
they were able to make me out. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> and one gentleman was asking, I should remove the nose so she can see my face well. Very well. <laughs> they extend their greetings. Okay. They've been watching the program. That's right. We thank yeah. God. Uh, and I met the Seventh day Adventist Church pastor. Okay. Over there. I think his name is Pastor J George Gelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he also sent his regards. And I hope you sent my message to him. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Remember, they are doing very they well. They should wake up. Yeah, they are. In fact, <laughs> that place is not a can speaking dominated though okay but they seem to be able to understand us Very and now that we are adding the english program <laughs> uh, i mean it, they, they are now you know going well that's right with the program so we we, we commend them yeah. for their hard work over the introducing the program to the people there god bless them amen yeah let me also say hi to our cherished viewers okay and those who are listening to us both home and abroad that's right yeah we are dealing with the world's unpardonable scene mm -hmm. yes like i said last week it appears this is the platform that is discussing this particular subject apart from this place you know no no yes and i'm saying that like you rightly introduced in 2015 mm -hmm. the united nations adopted the 17 sdgs that's right now i am not against this no we no are we against the program but it is clear that when you look at the programs number five and 13 it is a platform where the world is being led into committing a pardonable sin that's right that's the alarm that i'm ringing from here so people should just bear with me as we unearth some of these things right. we've dealt much with um, the lgbt crisis hidden in agenda five that's right now we want to uh, advance to the 13th program which is climate change okay but before even we get there and uh, bring out what we bring out what we have seen to be the grounds of the unpardonable sin i will just do some little introduction this evening okay. and then god willing all things being equal for us coming friday next week <laughs> then we'll be able to be on earth yes right. mm, very gradually mm -hmm. but as usual let me introduce my key test in numbers chapter 15 mm -hmm. and verse 30 and 31 mm -hmm. i read numbers chapter 15 verse 30 and 31 mm -hmm. king james version is speaking from here mm -hmm. but the soul that doeth ought presumptuously <laughs> whether he be born in the land or a stranger the same reproacheth the lord and that soul shall be cut off from among his people mm -hmm. that is verse 30 okay. 31 reads because he has despised the word of the lord mm -hmm. and has broken his commandment that soul shall utterly be cut off okay. his iniquity shall be upon him. upon him yes so this is the unpardonable sin that's right i'm saying that when this world decides to commit or to break any of the yeah, any of the commandments of God collectively. Okay. Yes. When we decide deliberately, willfully, collectively to break any of the commandments of God, then we should know that we are stepping on a dangerous ground or we have crossed the red line. That's right. Yes. In the days of Lot, we were able to do justice to that. That's that was what we had that was what is happening. That was what happened in the days of Lot, mm -hmm. and it's repeating itself under the ID, uh, SDG 5. Okay. Yes. Looking at SDG 5 at this surface, it has no many evil intention. Okay. But it has become so clear from the videos we aired, from the documents we presented, that the world is using that particular program to okay. promote the LGBT rights. That's the gender equality. Gender equality. Right. So Christ said, as it was in the days of Lord, that one has happened from Luke chapter 17, verse 28 and 29, and then to 30. It happened. <laughs> now, um, I made mention of the principal sin of Sodom, okay. and I, wa I want to revisit there because I know people are trying to confuse other people out there. Okay. But I'm praying that as they listen to our presentation, they would understand the point where we are standing. Mm -hmm. Now, in Exit, no, this is Ezekiel chapter 16, mm -hmm. and then Jude 1 7. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. There is something there. God is speaking over here. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 49. Okay. He says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Mm -hmm. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her. 
and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy. Now, all these are the sins of Sodom. Okay. But it wasn't a sin that was general. You understand? Okay. Now, the 50th verse. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. That is the key. That's right. Therefore, I took them away as I saw no good. Mm. See, we are not saying that the only sin that Sodom committed was sodomy and lesbianism. Okay. We have not said that. Mm. There were other sins. Okay. But the act of the same sex, mm -hmm. that homosexuality, <laughs> was a principal sin. You understand? Because anytime you mention Sodom and Gomorrah, that's what comes to mind. That comes to mind. There were other sins. Okay. But those sins hadn't matured mm. to the point where we would say it was unpardonable. Okay. Understand mm -hmm. the the homosexuality factor strikes directly at the commandment of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, and since the whole nation decided to, then God has to visit them. That's right. And when you read the same thing as presented in the New Testament, the book of Jude, chapter one, verse seven, mm -hmm. Jude one, verse seven, says even as Sodom, that's right, and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, mm -hmm. giving themselves unto fornication and going after strange flesh, that's the key, mm -hmm. are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Okay. So yes, Sodom, they were haughty, they were wicked, and the rest. The Bible makes it clear that they were consumed in the flames on the grounds of the same-sex marriage factor. That is the key. That's right. So those who are Can saying... I'm coming. You did mention of strange bodies. Yes, yes. Can yes, we yes. link that one to... Um, transgender and the rest exactly they fall under that mm -hmm. that's strange flesh okay yeah in the new kingdom she will tell you strange body mm -hmm. yes that is sort of okay so they were punished particularly because of this sin mm -hmm. yes and i am saying that when this history repeats itself in our day and age mm -hmm. we should also expect the same punishment that's right very good so the crowning sin the principal sin of Sodom, the very specific one was the um LGBT. LGBT rights. That's right. Yes. What we, now we call it LGBT rights. Mm -hmm. You see, there is one thing I want to bring across, which introduces the program or the lesson for this evening. When you are talking about the fulfillment of prophecy, mm -hmm. there are certain characteristics that you should be observing. I'm reading from Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Okay. It will tell you that there is a time where when the prophecy is predicted. Mm -hmm. And then the arrival of the prophecy in history, mm -hmm. and then it makes progress, and then it gets to its apex, the crescendo. Okay. Every prophecy has these four characteristics. Now, in Second Peter chapter one verse nineteen, mm -hmm. it says, "What we have also a more sure word of prophecy." That's right. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. That's right. Until the day down, and the day star arises. Arise. In your hearts that's right yes in fact it is just a verse mm -hmm. but it entails a lot now when we say we have the sure word of prophecy mm -hmm. that is a time when the prophecy is given mm -hmm. you have to believe it that the word that has been given is sure and it will surely come to pass yes, you don't doubt it okay and then you should also be watching for its arrival in history when okay. it's fulfilled for example in Isaiah 7, 14, it says, The Lord himself shall give you a sign, a virgin shall conceive. That's a prophecy. That's right. You should believe that word. <laughs> and then you should watch for the fulfillment. That's right. That was in Luke 1, when Angel Gabriel visited Mary. <laughs> so that is the arrival of the prophecy. And then it makes progress. That's right. Understand? Yes. That is how Second Peter is saying. <laughs> so the show of the prophecy is when the prophecy is given. <laughs> and then he said, Ye do well that ye take heed. <laughs> and the moment you see the signal, you should believe it. That's right. And then when it lands in history, it makes progress. That's why Peter was saying that, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, gradually, okay. until the day down. Then you see that now we are beginning to see things clearer. Until the day star rises in your hearts. That is where prophecy hits its crescendo. That's right. You understand? So when prophecy goes through these stages, you should be able to understand that, yes, we are making progress. You know, last week, we had two videos here. That's right. Where the, the then Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, mm -hmm. said they were leaving no one behind. That's right. And that the UN has come 
to do the work that it was given to it to be done 70 years, 70 ago. years ago. Very good. We, we aired that video mm -hmm. last, last week. week. Fine. Now, based upon that, mm -hmm. we didn't know when the UN was formed, mm -hmm. we did not know that that was their agenda. Mm -hmm. It was then in the dark. Okay. Understand? That's right. Yes, That's it was right. in the dark. And as time goes on. As time goes on, mm -hmm. they kept coming up mm -hmm. gradually. Gradually. Now they are telling us that they are in to leave no one behind. behind. So now it is clear. So Christians should believe that this is prophecy. Mm -hmm. You see, and we are not... No, even, let's be specific to our viewers. Maybe yes. somebody couldn't watch it last week. Mm -hmm. It was specifically about the LGBT. Yes. That Ban ki -moon said they, it was given to them or they started it 70 years, years ago, ago. And now they are getting closer, closer. and closer to it. Yes. It was LGBT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I am not playing in the United Nations because they are saying so. Mm -hmm. But it is prophetic. And it must come to pass. We will eventually arrive at Revelation 17. Mm -hmm. And when we are dealing with the, um, the universal kingdoms mentioned there, we will, you will see that the United Nations has been predicted there in Bible prophecy. Okay. Far back in AD 31, there is a small chart on the screen. Mm -hmm. Far back in AD 31, when Christ gave the show of the prophecy concerning the repetition of the history of um, Sodom mm -hmm. in our, in, in the, at the end of the world, when he said it at that time, little did anyone would believe that these things were coming to happen. That's right. But thank God, we were here in 1945 when the UN was formed, <laughs> right? At the formation of the UN, we never knew that these we were things were going to yes. drive to mm. towards that. So Christians should have gotten the wing at that time that the prophecy has arrived in history, and then we should be trailing the UN. But since it it, it presented itself as a peaceful organization. Mm -hmm. We also didn't take the trouble to find out what the Bible will say about that organization until they began working on dangerous ground. Then we were alarmed. Okay. There is something in theology they called versitinium exibentum. That will mean that giving interpretation of the prophecy after the event. Oh, okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. You wait when the event happens before you try to apply prophecy. Okay. Yes. That's not what we are doing here. Mm -hmm. UN has been predicted in scripture. That was when we come to Revelation 17, we shall do this. Okay. So those theologians who may think that this is accidental, it's none of those. We are we know what we are saying and uh, we have the records. So I want them to understand this. Now, the history of the United Nations, I, I I'm just coming from their website. You we, we have it on the screen, but you may want to read this for our cherished viewers. Okay. Yes. Hmm. United Nations, mm -hmm. history of the United Nations. Yes. As World War II was about to end in 1945, mm -hmm. nations were in reigns and the world wanted peace. Yes. Respective representatives of 50 countries gathered at the United Nations Conference mm -hmm. on International Organization in San Francisco, California from 25, 25th April to 26th June 1945. Sure. For the next two months, mm -hmm. they proceeded to draft and then sign the UN Charter, which created a new international organization. The United Nations, which um, it was hoped would prevent another war, another world war like the one they had just lived through. Four months after San Francisco Conference ended, mm -hmm. the United Nations officially began on 24th October 1945, yes. when it came into existence after its charter had been re rectified by China, Good. France, and Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, the United States, and by a major majority of other signatories. Very good. Now, you now can, yeah, you can drop to the down the, the paragraph. Now, yes, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, now, yes. More than 75 years later, mm -hmm. the United Nations is still working to maintain international peace and security, yes. give humanitarian assistance to those in need, protect human rights, and uphold international law. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, the UN, they are admitting that they came in. They have already admitted that they came in no long ago, after the World War I. Two. After, after World War One, mm -hmm. World War Two, mm -hmm. and then they came in. That's right. And then they, they have started putting things in order to ensure world peace. That's right. Fine. So you came in in 1945, 
And then you have suddenly, within 70, 75 years, mm -hmm. trying to bring the whole world together. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. To follow certain program which you think will bring peace. That's right. And I am saying that the program they are introducing mm -hmm. is leading us to cross the dangerous grounds. Okay. We, we, we discussed that by their oath which they swear. Mm -hmm. We will give a video That's to right. that effect That's in a right. moment. But under Agenda 5, when they united and then they accepted that um, charter, charter and, and then under the human rights and then the gender equality, mm -hmm. at the international level they accepted it, but at the national level some nations accepted, some couldn't, okay. right, including Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now when you enter those nations, which have accepted it, like United States and the European Union and co. There are some bodies there, like religious bodies, who are also, you know, staggering, okay. either to accept or not. Some have accepted it, some don't. <laughs> and within the community of those who have accepted it, there are some there who also don't want it, like the religious bodies. We saw Methodist, right. Presby, all voting for and against. Now, all those things, all those people will be given a second chance. Okay. You understand? <laughs> that second chance falls under the item 13 the climate change okay yes so as sodom was visited by the flames <laughs> that was over it was gone now there is one thing that i want to bring to notice before we come to the main topic that's right in the destruction of sodom <laughs> not everyone consumed in the flame was a same-sex activist that's right no that's true that's true at least we have the evidence in Two genesis guys. chapter 19 <laughs> verse 14 <laughs> That a Lord went out and spoke unto his sons in law, mm -hmm. which married his daughters. That's right. So there were at least we don't at know there least. were two guys who wanted to marry women, yes, not men as you understand. Yeah. Today, so way. these are the, the, the sons in law of Lord. Mm -hmm. These are heterosexuals, men marrying women, mm -hmm. women marrying men. Mm -hmm. But why were they consumed? That's the question people need to ask. If Sodom was consumed because of same sex marriage. <laughs> why would the daughters in law why were they not spared? Yes, why were they why, why weren't they spared? Mm -hmm. That will come into our next lesson when we enter into the climate change issue. Okay. But let me read a very few quotes. In Romans chapter one, verse 21, 22, and then we I think we jump to verse um, 30. <laughs> in 21 it says, But because when they knew God, mm -hmm. they glorified him not as God. Okay. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. you understand? So, it is one thing knowing God, and then refusing to acknowledge Him as God. Mm -hmm. In verse 22, it says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, in, in the days of Sodom, those heterosexuals, people who didn't practice the sodomy, mm -hmm. even though they didn't do that, but they didn't give God the due respect. Okay. When the command came down, leave this place, God has sent us to consume the city, they, they, they looked at Lot as if he was mentally deranged. Mm -hmm. See, he was a crazy guy. You but see? they didn't know God at all. That's what the Bible is saying. They refused <laughs> to acknowledge God. <laughs> you understand? Huh? Now, Christians today are given the same opportunity. You have to acknowledge that there is or there is not. So, and that introduces the climate change matter. Now let us uh, three straight videos. Okay, okay, very well. Viewers, today yeah. we have 12 videos to show, to prove a point or explain a point. Mm -hmm. So production, if you are ready, video one, one two, two, three. three. Yes. Please roll them for us. I, Kofi Annan. I, Kofi Annan. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. To exercise in all loyalty. To exercise in all loyalty discretion and conscience discretion and conscience the functions entrusted to me the functions entrusted to me as secretary general of the united nations as secretary general of the united nations to discharge these functions to discharge these functions and regulate my conduct and regulate my conduct with the interest with the interest of the united nations only in view of the united nations only in view and not to seek and not to seek or accept or accept instructions instructions in regard to the performance of my duties in regard to the performance of my duties from any government from any government or other authority or other authority external to the organization external to the organization congratulations sir
hurts. Roaring back to life. We need to get out of here. Yeah. In Nowra, the fire jumped the Shoalhaven River. I'm scared witless. Either side of the Princess Highway, the main escape route was a bonfire. I just heard a loud kaboom five or ten minutes ago. The blaze has been hibernating for weeks. In these conditions, it burned with intent. The might of defence outmuscled in the face of this latest threat. This is at Camberwara, looking towards Kangaroo Valley. The monster crawling up and over the escarpment. A fire so... sent us this report. This is what days of relentless downpour looks like. A deluge not seen in five decades here in New South Wales. Emergency services have been inundated with nearly 10,000 calls and have conducted more than 500 rescues so far. And this is what they're up against. Water so high and forceful, a three-bedroom cottage was seen floating through. Crews have also been called in to get stranded cattle to safety. In the town of Windsor, northwest of Sydney, residents are used to floods this time of year. Welcome once again. We've watched three videos. We will go to Evangelist. But Evangelist, I have this message from um, Kenya. Marion Eroni, watching you live from Kenya. Powerful message. God bless you. God bless you, Elder. Um, Annan Joseph, namesake. <laughs> so, Evangelist, we've watched three videos. Yes. Now, we heard the late Kofi Annan. That's right. Yeah, we are not here to maybe revisit the wound of the family, the That's grief. Right. No, That's God right. forbid. But we are taking the issue at the United Nations level. Mm -hmm. And you, you heard the speech. That's right. Christ said that as it was in the days of Noah, mm -hmm. so shall it be. That is Luke 17, 26. Mm -hmm. Now, in the days of Noah, we need to establish the scene. The Panama scene of that type. We okay. need, because we haven't been able to establish that in, as yet. Now, when you read their chart sheet, mm -hmm. the chart that God gave them, or which the Bible gave them in Genesis chapter 11, says, verse 6, no, chapter 6 of verse, Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, the earth also was what? Corrupt. Corrupt. That's right. Before God. Mm -hmm. And the earth was filled with violence. Mm -hmm. In fact, let us just explain it a little. Mm -hmm. The earth also was corrupt before God, mm -hmm. not before man. Mm -hmm. Before God, it was corrupt. Okay. So we will raise the bar to that level. And then it was filled with violence. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And God looked upon the earth, mm -hmm. and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh. I'm particular about that word there. All, all flesh. A L L. Mm -hmm. All means all. all. All flesh have corrupted his way upon the earth. Therefore, the next thing was. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come. If all flesh have corrupted their ways, then what is the use of keeping them on the planet? Okay. So God said, their end is come. You understand? So the end came and they were blotted out. That's right. In the same manner. It says this history shall be repeated. So it means that all flesh will become oh. corrupt wow. in the sight of God. <laughs> all. That's why I'm saying that we are giving a second chance. Hmm. Now, that word corrupt, <laughs> maybe in the Ghanaian sense and the ordinary English language, <laughs> we may think it will be involved bribery and all those things. And we things. will link it to politicians. Yes. Immediately we say corruption. That is hmm. not. Ah, okay. That is not. This that corruption is different. It's different. That is why sometimes <laughs> I have to, we have to revisit the technicalities. Okay. So I'm putting the Hebrew of Genesis 6, 11 on the screen for the um, Hebrew listeners or the hebrew students okay yes and then we will bring out that word corrupt mm -hmm. now in genesis chapter 6 verse 11 the word corrupt written there in the hebrew it is mentioned shakaf mm -hmm. and that shakaf is defined in the hebrew lexicon in the hebrew concordance mm -hmm. as to cast off mm -hmm. right or to mar or to destroy mm -hmm. the image of god you know, God created man in his own image. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. That image that God induced in us from the beginning mm -hmm. was marred by the presence of sin. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. But we still retain the presence of God. God, we knew he exists. He exists. He's the creator. Mm -hmm. In the days of Noah, they cast off 
the knowledge of his assistance. They deliberately, willfully decided they would not give him that respect. Okay. That's the Hebrew. So can we say they ignored God? They ignored in him. their day-to-day -day activities exactly. and life. Exactly. That's what they did. Okay. Understand? So that word corrupt there, that's the shakath, which means that they cast off. <laughs> and when I'm, when I'm using the word cast off, all restraints that God places on human beings to restrain you so you should know that he is the creator. Don't mm -hmm. overstep your bounds. Mm -hmm. They cast off all those restraints. Understand? Now, we read a quote in Romans. Mm -hmm. I'll just visit verse 20, verse chapter 1, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And then we'll read Psalm 14, verse 1. Okay. Now, in Romans 1, 20, it says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, mm -hmm. God gave them over to a reprobate mind mm -hmm. to do those things which are not convenient. Understand? Mm -hmm. So this was a deliberate action. Okay. So they will not retain God in their knowledge. Then in verse four, chapter in Psalm 14, verse 1, mm -hmm. it says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. That's right. They are corrupt. That the cor same word. The same word has appeared here. Yes. So in the days of Noah. <laughs> They demonstrated by their actions that there is no God. Not God being referred to as an absentee landlord. No. He doesn't exist at yes, all. Yes, he doesn't okay. exist. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why Romans explains that they didn't want to retain the knowledge of God. They made sure they, they cast it out of their minds. Okay. Yes. They couldn't explain nature. I mean, things were beyond the explanation. There were evidence that the world did not just came to being as they want us to believe okay. that there was a superior being that placed everything into motion but do not give that being the glory okay you understand yes and when you look at the swearing in of the united Nations secretary general mm -hmm. there's a portion we say to discharge those functions and regulate my conduct with the interest of the united nation only, only in, in view, view. and then right. it says and not to seek mm -hmm. or accept instructions mm -hmm. in regard to the performance of my duties mm -hmm. from any government or other external authority or other authority external to the organization. Wow. You understand? So it means that the UN is there not to regard any external authority. And we know. So the word of God is an external authority. Accepted over there. Yes. So we know that when we say external authority, mm -hmm. you are referring to the power of Jehovah. Besides him, what external power again do we have? Now, the second and third videos, that's Australia. Australia last year, around this time, it was fire. Okay. That was the second video. Mm -hmm. Why this year, the same time this year, now it is rain. Mm -hmm. Not only rain, it is flat. Torrential flood. The same place. The same place. New South Wales. I intentionally brought those two videos. How would they explain? Last year, January, February, March, fire. They were fighting fire. Yes, they were fighting fire, trying to extinguish fire. <laughs> now, that time is past. We are in 2021. The same March again. Now it is flooding. And they call it climate change. No problem. We don't have, we, I mean, we, we, we will not drag it with them. Okay. The climate is changing. Mm. But I am here to tell them that the change in the climate as they want us to believe that it is caused by human um, activities <laughs> that is scientific yes it is caused by human activities we have not disputed that with them okay the one who created it he says that when we see these things we should know that he is in charge that's right you understand mm -hmm. yes now you see when we we talk of the change in the climate <laughs> And they, they say it is coming from the sun. The sun is the main culprit. Mm -hmm. Fine. Who created the sun? Okay. They should, they should ask that question. They have been able to tell how the sun came into being. Fine. Okay. But before they know, in, in, in science, or when you are into um, what they call the scientific understanding of creation, mm -hmm. there is a level you get to, they call it abiogenesis. Okay. That abiogenesis is the beginning of life. They have never been able to explain that point till date. Okay. Yes. They have never they have never been able to explain it. Mm. It is telling them that there is an intelligent being somewhere 
That is the creator which we believe because by faith we know he, he exists. Okay. Now, the being, the God who created us controls nature. Understand? Okay. So, at, a, at points in time, we will be reading scriptures very soon when we get to Ezekiel 14. Okay. He controls nature mm -hmm. to sensitize us mm -hmm. or to conscientize us that he is in charge. Mm -hmm. So, those flood and fire that we saw happening not only in Australia, but it's all over the globe, mm -hmm. which they are calling climate change. That is not the only thing. The next four videos will talk about locusts and then this pandemic. Okay. And then we will bring some um, Bible course to explain certain points. So production can give us the next four videos, video four, five, six, seven. In fact, we will go to the videos, but mm -hmm. I want us to understand you better. Yes. So what you are trying to tell us is, during the time of Noah, mm -hmm. they took the, their mind from God, the Creator, Yes. and did their things the way they want. Very good. And God has um, prophesied that before the second coming of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. this prophecy will be will, repeated. Re, will be repeated. Very good. Meaning the world will take the mind of God, or will take their mind from God the Creator, mm -hmm. and do things the way they want. They want. And per the video that we showed, that Kofi now sworn yes. um, to... Uh, um, um, Not to seek. That's right. Or accept As any external authority, authority to the UN means that yes. we have sidelined God exactly. in all the things that we are exactly. doing in the world. So this understand. prophecy yes. has been fulfilled. It's fulfilling. So we are using that external authority mm -hmm. to explain what they call climate change. Okay. There is someone who controls the climate. And so far as we've sidelined God, it means that God will visit us with calamity sure. to prove that He is He's the creator. in control. So it is not anything like the uh, climate change that they are trying to make us understand that that is causing. We accept their terminologies. Mm -hmm. Climate change, mm -hmm. global warming, we accept it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All the definitions that they are bringing, we are, we are accepting it. We are not against them. But we are telling them that mm -hmm. there is a power beyond their scientific research. God is angry with what yes. they are doing. Yes. You understand? There Very is a well. power beyond their scientific research. Very well. And we are drawing their attention to that power. Okay. And that's the external authority which they are refusing to acknowledge. The next four Production. The next four, um, four videos, if you are ready, please roll them for us. Pakistan are facing their worst plague of locusts in decades. Authorities in both countries fear a food security crisis. And even as Pakistan struggles with the economic fallout of the coronavirus lockdown, its agricultural sector says the insect infestation poses a greater challenge. These tiny insects are far from fussy eaters. Feasting in swarms of millions, they're now threatening to out-eat Pakistan's population at a critical time. The locust threat is several times more dangerous than the coronavirus. I would say it is a hundred times, a thousand times more dangerous than corona. When you were fighting against coronavirus, you had crops, grains, vegetables, things to eat. No one went to bed hungry. While Pakistan's economy is reeling from the ongoing coronavirus lockdown, the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization
locusts, locusts here in Kaisosi. Kaisosi, a cloud of locusts. Take a look at that. Take a look at this. Wow. Wow. Take a look at this. We are going to be left with nothing, nothing, completely nothing. We are here to see like oh, what we need to see. Gira, no passing pass. We are going to one more, more, more. What to candere? Any simple? No passing pass. Dari kare, dari kare, dari kare. The number of daily COVID-19 deaths recorded in Brazil has climbed above 2,000 people for the first time. Over 270,000 people there have now lost their lives to the coronavirus, a death toll surpassed only by the United States. Scientists say Brazil's current wave of infections and deaths is being fueled by a more contagious virus variant. It started in early January in the Amazonian city of Manaus. Hospitals ran out of oxygen and people died waiting for medical attention. But health experts now say complacency... Hmm. Welcome once again. We've taken God out of the equation and the resource is a disaster. Let's go back to Evangelist for the explanation. Yes. Before... Okay, let's get. I'm reading from Ezekiel chapter 14 and mm -hmm. verse 12 okay. and 13. Mm -hmm. So it will help to facilitate the explanation. In Ezekiel 14, it says, The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, mm -hmm. Son of man, when the land sinned against me by trespassing grievously, mm -hmm. then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, mm -hmm. and will send famine upon it, mm -hmm. and will cut off man and beast from it. Let me add verse 21. Mm -hmm. For thus says the Lord, the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, mm -hmm. the sword, the famine, mm -hmm. the noisome beast, mm -hmm. and the pestilence mm -hmm. to cut off from it man and beast. Now let me remind our viewers of this. Mm -hmm. We began, or let me say, the first time we heard of this COVID-19 was in November 2019. Okay. in China. Mm -hmm. That is why we started hearing it here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But those of us who tracked it were hearing it from June 2019. It was then limited to one in China. We thought it was for them alone, like how we've been hearing about Ebola, SARS, and the rest. Okay. But this one has become pandemic. That means mm -hmm. worldwide. worldwide. Now, when it started, <laughs> the locusts that we had also started, they all began together. Whoa. But the world is not focusing on the locusts. Maybe it's because mm -hmm. they are not in Ghana or yes. they are not spread Maybe. across the globe. Mm -hmm. When you listen to the, the first video on the locusts, mm -hmm. Michael Bloomberg, they are attributing the presence of these locusts to climate change. Wow. Everything. Yes. In mm -hmm. biblical times, mm -hmm. locusts came as a result of when the land has mm -hmm. sinned against the Lord. God uses the locust to turn the attention of the people to what they are doing and then they will repent, pray and the land is cleared and the locust vanishes away. Okay. But this time, from 2019, these locusts have been there. 2020, they are there. 2021, they are still here with us. Okay. And they are consuming food crops. And it is one way of introducing what? Hunger and famine That's and right. starvation. Mm. And they are attributing all these things to what? Climate change. Climate change. Mm. Very good English. Yes. And you see, had the pandemic been alone, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have much problem. But it has come together with this locust infestation. Mm -hmm. Not that one alone. The next four videos will also add to it. Okay. I want to tell the United Nations, the whole world, that there is a God in heaven. <laughs> so that when we are crossing the red line, he uses nature to warn us. Okay. Paraventure, that will make us turn mm -hmm. unto him. Mm -hmm. But if we should persist, then we get to a place where he could no longer protect us and he leaves out to the cause. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you reap what you have sown. Okay. So all this with they are calling climate change, global warming, what have you. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't have a problem with them. But God is using nature to warn us. Okay. Because he has given us the Bible, we have rejected it. Mm -hmm. So now you have to use this method, this judgment to warn us by sea, by land, by air, by fire, by flood, by pestilence. To draw our attention to draw our attention to him. 
And in our efforts mm -hmm. to um, bring a cure to some of those things, mm -hmm. we are rather angering. I mean, we are adding uh, petrol mm -hmm. to the fire. Mm -hmm. The next four videos. Hmm. Production, the next four videos, if you are ready, please roll them for us. 2020 will go down in history as the year of the coronavirus pandemic. But the head of the UN World Food Programme has warned of another threat on the horizon. Uh, at the same time, while we're dealing with COVID-19 pandemic, we're also on the brink of a hunger pandemic. Almost 700 million people went without enough to eat in 2019, and the United Nations has warned another 132 million could be added to that number in 2020. COVID-19 has exacerbated the problem, but even before the pandemic, hunger was on the rise because of poverty, a growing population, disease, conflict, and climate change. The climate crisis could lead to an extra 183 million people facing hunger by 2050, as our warming planet affects how food is grown and distributed. So now, ocean deoxygenation. Probably haven't heard of that, but it's a very big problem. Oceans losing oxygen due to climate change, which will in turn affect hundreds of millions of people, according to a new United Nations report. Scientists are calling this the ultimate wake-up call to humanity. Why? Well, the ocean represents 97% of the physical, habitable space on the planet. It is central to sustaining all life on Earth. The major drivers of ocean oxygen loss are climate change and nutrient pollution, with the latter affecting coast... ...or carrying disease, or too little water from drought, and other related problems with water scarcity. Countries like Syria, India and Pakistan are also fighting over water. The study reveals that sub-African countries, East and Southeast Asia, will be most affected by water scarcity. It was projected that the next wars will be on water. Some, some studies have said that World War III will be on water. So is the earth getting too hot? That is why water is becoming scarce? Is climate change solely to blame? An expert says that we, humans, are part of it too. The main factors is both on the, on the supply side, it's mainly the big. There's a howl in the wind, like a deep guttural howl in the wind that you only hear in the most severe storms. It was frightening at times, white caps on the harbor, white caps on the road. It was so eerie because you just got a feeling that this is going to be really bad. You know, if you're going to study severe weather and climate change and the impact of the ocean on a place, this is the place to be. I mean, it's just really a matter of time before that ocean meets the marsh. And the town will be flooded. It's certainly going to happen in my lifetime. Now to a dire warning about climate change. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. It also says if unprecedented changes are not made and made soon, there will be irreversible damage to the planet. The report focuses on what could happen if global temperatures rise by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. It would likely mean more erratic weather, dangerous heat waves, rising sea levels, and dying coral reefs. CNN meteorologist Ivan Cabrera. Welcome once again. Uh, I think we've watched some videos and we'll go to Evangelist for the explanation. And we have some few messages here. Um, today we, we are having problem with the WhatsApp line. So you can send your messages on Facebook for us to read them for you. Um, watching you live, may God give you more revelations and wisdom to teach more. Amen. God bless you for watching. Oh, Bruni. Okay. Um, please invite family and friends to watch also. Yeah, I side with you. Um, you can never fight God and go scot free. Um, the dry bones. Very good message. <laughs> God bless you, Evangelist. Now, the videos. Mm -hmm. They are predicting that there is, we will be experiencing global hunger. And which is very true mm -hmm. a result of what climate change mm -hmm. then the next one says ocean deoxygenation that means the sea mm -hmm. is losing, losing oxygen, oxygen. Wow. and the fishes will be dying mm -hmm. right 
Then they say that we have a global water shortage. It's looming by 2025. Two thirds of the world will not get portable drinking water wow. by 2025. We are in 2021 now. Good. And then the sea level rise, where you saw those tidal waves, <laughs> that was in Massachusetts, <laughs> just last month, February 2021. Okay. See how the sea level is rising. <laughs> now, in all these things, to, to, to give a summary, the last video that we, there will be two more. <laughs> he says that they are saying that if things continue like this, we have until 2030 <laughs> to live on this, that, earth. on this earth. Wow. So, because they have assumed with their calculations that we have about nine years left, <laughs> they are bringing laws which will facilitate, you know, things so ambitiously, so okay. fast, mm -hmm. so much that we need to, to arrest the situation. the situation. And the laws which they are going to introduce was going to be part of the unpardonable scene. Wow. Yes. So that's why I said that this evening I will not jump into the unpardonable scene, but I'm, I'm bringing out the the process <laughs> by which they introduce the unpardonable sin wow. and it is in the climate change and it's also in the Paris agreement the next two videos we just clear there for the that we can pack off so apart from the sodomy that's yes. the lgbt mm -hmm. they are now bringing another sin and that the world sin. will commit which yes is also unpardonable that sin. tops it okay because the god of nature is giving you signs by sea by air by land through creation animals everything is being affected mm -hmm. we are still struggling with god you understand okay yes and in our process hmm. we will we, we will be we'll be stepping in dangerous ground wow. the next two videos quickly production the next two videos if you are ready please do them for us today the paris agreement on climate change enters into force it is a historic day for people and the planet all the world's nations have agreed to act to limit global temperature rise. All countries have pledged to strengthen resilience to the changes that are coming. The road to Paris was long. Over the course of many years, a growing chorus of scientists, civil society groups, and business leaders demanded action. In Paris, their governments responded. The United Nations Today, 19th of February, 2021, at the beginning of a crucial year and a crucial decade for confronting the climate crisis, the United States rejoins the Paris Climate Agreement after four years of absence. Unanimously adopted by 195 nations, the Paris Agreement came into force in 2016, establishing targets and mechanisms to lead the global economy to a zero emissions future. It was one of the most extraordinary examples of multilateralism ever, and one which I had the privilege to coordinate. One year later, the United States withdrew. The Biden-Harris administration is now bringing the United States back and has expressed strong commitment to responsible climate action. The huh. Welcome once again. America is back. back. Don't forget <laughs> that greetings. Even as we've watched the, the last one. videos. Yes. <laughs> Ban Ki moon, the then UN boss, <laughs> he said today the Paris Agreement, Agreement. Agreement enters into force. And that was in November 2016. Then you have the second video, <laughs> Christiana Figueroa, saying that the moment it entered into force, a year later, United States withdrew. Now, this year, February 19, it is back. Mm. Yes. The climate change mm -hmm. is in the SDGs number 13. Okay. They are using that one plus the Paris Agreement mm -hmm. to push the second unpardonable sin. I'm saying that it is inside there. Okay. Come next week, God willing. We pray nobody you will unveil that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm beginning to ring the alarming bells this evening mm -hmm. that item 13 on the SDG 17. To get up the Paris Agreement change <laughs> is a second ground for the committing of the unpardonable sin. Okay. We finish with number five. Mm -hmm. That is the same sex marriage. Now we are entering the climate change. There is unpardonable sin in there. Come next week, we will be on earth in it. We document some videos. We know what we are saying. God bless us. Okay, Ivan, thank you. Um, I think our time is up, but let me see if I can take two messages. Good evening. I'm agreeing with the man of God because. 
these locusts, God called them his great army and used them to destroy places including even Israel when they sinned against him, God, him God, okay? okay. So I think that it's a very long one. God, good presentation. I have watched the evangelist for some time now and I think what is showing is just a tip of the iceberg. I believe time will not permit him. Okay. God richly bless you so much, Evangelist Kakari and Evangelist Joseph Anane. La South SDA Church members, most of them are watching live. Okay, God bless you. God bless Happy Sabbath to Elder Samson Fofie and Mercy Anane, my lovely mom. Okay, God bless you. Um, Evangelist, your last word so that we draw the curtain down. Where we have reached now, <laughs> we are in the last act of the drama. And whoever has a knowledge of the truth should place himself on the law side okay. so that we all work together. And I'll be descending on seven day Adventists in particular. Mm -hmm. I'll be descending on them. Okay. Not angrily, mm -hmm. but where we've got into, you cannot bypass them. Okay. I'll be unfair to massage the truth when I get to their grounds. Okay. So they should get ready. That's right. Yes. I, I'll be fair to them. I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, massage any truth. They should be on their watch out from okay. next week. Okay. Yes. Even God bless you. Um, viewers, today to we have to draw the curtain down here and bring the program to an end. But we will still plead with you that um, airtime is not for free. The one hour that we are using for the English program and then the P program is not for free. So you can also contribute to support us to sustain this program on air. And the number is 055 357 that's zero five five three five seven four nine three three, which is on your screens. You can donate your widow's mite to support or to sustain this program on air. And don't forget, every Sunday evening from six to seven, we come your way with the key program, and then the repeat by the kind courtesy of um, Home Base TV management comes your way on Wednesdays ten p.m. So don't forget. To get in touch with all our videos and then programs. Um, thank you. My name is Kofi Kakari, and Evangelist Joseph Anani was the medium through which God used to interpret these visions or revelations to us. God willing, same time, same station. Revelation hour will come our way once again. You will know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. Good evening, and thank you for watching.